25 minutes before 11 o'clock. Nice looking Monday morning. Hope you're doing well. Um, there was a story in yesterday's news that it is troubling. I mean, the I, I don't know. I hate doing the news. I hate listening to the news. And I've said this before. I mean, it's bad enough when there's a natural disaster. It's bad enough when there's an accident. But to hear about people who knowingly go out and try to hurt other people. I mean, we've had our share of them here in this little town of Ocala. And um, with the, the near Milwaukee, those two 12-year-old girls, right? Yes. St- yeah. Stabbed that other 12-year-old girl. And then yep. for- fortunately, the victim in that case, the 12-year-old victim, uh, is apparently recovering. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yesterday, another unbelievably horrible story out of Las Vegas. Um, two Las Vegas police officers just doing their job. I guess they stopped for a bite to eat at a pizza place. And then these two nuts, I think they were a married couple, goes in and, and shoots them. Then they go over to this Walmart and shoot a third, I think a lady, mm-hmm. Let's shoot a third person and kill her. What was she doing? Just went out to go shopping. What the heck is wrong with people, right? Um, And can you imagine what it's like to be a police officer in today's day and age? My dad was a police officer in New York City. um, Retired in 1972. So he was a, a police officer for 20 years from 52 to 72. And times were probably trying in those years as well. But I don't know. It seems like now it's even worse. It seems like now there's no respect for life. It seems like now there's these... I mean, mean, these two, apparently they had uh, swastikas in their their apartment and they had the evidence that they had this um, white supremacist mentality. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Randy Sutton uh, has been with us before. He is a retired police lieutenant from the Las Vegas Police Department. Uh, He knows this very well. He might even be familiar with the two officers who are no longer with us. Um, He also happens to be a wonderful author. He has been with us before, and so we're very honored to have him back again, even if we didn't have this to talk about. Uh, But we do have this to talk about. So let's say good morning to Lieutenant Randy Sutton. Good morning, Randy. How are you doing? Um, um, well, I've been better, uh, but I'm, I, I appreciate you having me on your show. Where are you right now? Uh, I'm in Las Vegas. Um, I've actually been on the phone, uh, even this morning about this incident and, uh, it's, uh, it's about seven thirty here and, uh, it's a very, it was a sleepless night for, for many of us. I bet. What was, when did you uh, retire from the Las Vegas Police Department? How long ago? A couple of years ago. A couple of years ago. Oh, so you're still pretty close to it. So, oh yeah, I'm, I'm very close to it. I'm still, a, I'm still a trainer for the for the police department. Oh wow, is Las Vegas typically a violent area? Uh, it's a rough town. The, uh, Las Vegas is uh, we is we're, I think we are the ninth largest police department in the country, and. Um, we're a little different in that we're a metropolitan police, which means that the uh, Clark County Sheriff and the Las Vegas City Police Department combined in the early 70s to form the Las Vegas Metro Police. So we're sheriffs as well as uh, as well as well patrol officers, police officers. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I think the way it works here is our Sheriff's Department respects the, what do you call, jurisdiction of the police department, and they... They right. they do cro- they do work together a lot, but typically that's your territory. We'll stay out of it. That's usually. But in Las Vegas, that's not the way it is. You work together all the time. Well, it, it is one police department. The Clark County Sheriff and the and the oh, I see. police is, is our one agency. Oh, okay. okay. And uh, and uh, so, it, it, but it, this town is um, it, there's there's a fair amount of violence here, and uh, but you know no, nothing can prepare you to be. Um, literally assassinated, which is what took place here yesterday. Absolutely, I know. Uh, these I these know. police officers were targeted. They were they were merely having lunch uh, when these uh, when these two a man and a woman came into the came into the the restaurant with fully with the intent to kill them um, and uh, and accomplish their mission. That's that's what they did. Do we do we know anything? 
about the the third person? Why did they kill the third person? If if they if they had their mind made up they were going to kill a police officer, why did they shoot a woman who was not a police officer? Well, apparently, um, the 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 story that I have at this point is that after they killed the officers, they they took their guns, they took the officers' weapons. Yeah, I read that too. Walked into walked across the street into a Walmart where I assumed they were going to start killing more people. <clears throat> and um, uh, someone, uh, a woman in there, looks like she had a CCW permit and engaged them in a firefight oh. and, uh, and uh, was killed by the, by the, by the woman. Oh, oh, wow. And then uh, the woman then killed her, her male companion and killed herself when they realized that, that the police had surrounded them. Wow. And how long did this take to, to unfold? How, how much time passed from the time um, of the first? It, it, well, it took place, you know, immediately uh, while, they're, while they're still, you know, trying to respond to the, to the first scene. They realized that these, these people went into the Walmart, which was do directly across the street. The, uh, the two police officers were white. I'm not trying to bring race into this, but the story says that these two were white supremacists, which made me think that they had killed non-white people. Um, no, no, they, the two officers were, were white. Yeah. But, you know, the, the, um, the police are symbols of authority to, to, the, to this group of, of, of morons. And, um, you know, they, they have this, this mindset that, um, um, and in fact, they said as they were walking out that the revolution has begun. And uh, so, which gives you a little bit uh, as to their mentality and, and, you know, what they're trying to accomplish, um, you know, to start a revolution. As, My goodness. You know, the, the fact that the officers are, you know, represent the authority of the government is what they're, you know, they're, uh, they're against. Do you know the families of the two officers? I do not. I do not. But, you know, in, in, the, in policing... Um, you know, we consider ourselves uh, one big family. You know, that's uh, yeah, sure, sure. You know, there's 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 a tremendous amount of of sadness, and um, you know, the the community's in shock, and the police department has certainly never experienced anything like this. We've lost officers, but never in never in in circumstances that uh, you know that are that are like this. So we don't we don't know if. Other than being conspiracy theorist morons, I like the word morons, so thank you for using it so I could use it, but aside from that, we don't know if maybe these two had been arrested and felt that they were mistreated. Nothing. We don't know any of that stuff, right? Uh, I, I don't know any of that at this point. Um, you know, according to the neighbors of these people, uh, they, they thought they were nuts also. Yeah, uh, I read fact, yeah, I read that, yeah. Yeah, and in fact, they had they had they had made threats to do exactly what they did, but nobody ever called the police to <sighs> report it. Wow, I, you know what we're learning from these things? We're learning to start reporting everything. You know, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to it's hard to know, and then and then you feel bad. It's you just don't know what to do. You know, these these two girls, these two twelve year old girls. In oh, that's that's a, this is a sick. In fact, there's a connection. There's a connection between that that incident and this really what is um it? well apparently these these uh these people were also fans of this uh, of this slender man no right. uh, uh kind of deal right and um um and of course that's you know that was the motivating factor be, you know in the attack of of that young girl wow um you know it, it's just the, the people don't realize the um, the damage that can be done simply from from these type of video games and and fantasies, um, I think you know, you're on right. on impressionable people. I mean, there there is uh, um, there's evidence that it actually that the video games actually affect the brain chemistry, and um, and it certainly was it, it, you know the the violent video games are, are a direct link to to most of the uh, of the insane, insane attacks that have taken place. 
You know, the, when the Grand Theft Auto video game first came out, I watched that and I thought, oh my gosh, I mean, you, you win this game by pulling people out of their car, shooting them and leaving them for dead and then driving around like a maniac without any... What, what, where's, where's the heroic uh, winning champion yeah. thing that we used to have when we were kids? You know, where, what happened to the whole champion mentality? Uh, exactly. You know, and, and eh. people used to have heroes that, um, you know, that, that meant something. Um, they respected the heroism of men and women who truly were heroes. And, uh, and we're, we, we seem to have lost that, um, you know, which is, in, in essence, I have a new book coming out this year, and, uh, and I spent the last year cruising the country talking to people that have done amazing things with their lives about who their personal heroes were. And, I, and you know, it was, it was a very, very uplifting experience, and um, it's called The Power of Legacy. It'll be out around Christmas time. And what I what I found while I was talking to people that have really accomplished you know tremendous things with their lives is that they had heroes, and these heroes in their personal lives uh, could have been parents, they could have been teachers, they could have been someone that gave them a hand during a, t a transitional time in their lives, but they truly were heroes. They affected their lives in very very positive ways, and unfortunately. You know, you look at, at at who these 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 killers looked up to, and it was Slender Man. Yeah, it, it's you know, it's um, it, it's almost it's mind boggling. And they, you know, it really is when on D -Day, on the seventieth anniversary of D Day on Friday, um, mm -hmm. we heard stories from true heroes. We heard stories of yes. of the the men who landed on Normandy Beach and in in the face of being fired at by the Nazi soldiers, went ahead anyway to try to free the people who had been captive in their own country for four years. Yes, I yes. Mean, what, what an amazing, uh, heroic thing to do. And, 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 and you guys in the police departments, you really do the exact same thing. You run in, look at the, look at the police officers in Vegas that went to that Walmart. They did the exact same thing. There were people in there with guns that were going to shoot at them, and they were going in again. It was the same thing with the firefighters in, World, in uh, the World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. They went in to fight what was in there. In, in that case, it was a fire. It, but, it, but you go against the dangerous thing while the rest of us run away from the dangerous thing. That's why I, well, I think, Lieutenant, I think that's why we really need to recognize the, the hero, heroism of, of your profession. And, and maybe, well, maybe, he, he, may, maybe more stories like what you write will get, uh, maybe the kids will read that instead of Slender Man. That's, that's, what, I, that's what my prayer is. It truly is. I, I try to touch as many lives as I can through my writing, through my speaking engagements, and, and, and um, uh, you know, bring to light the, the, the everyday heroism of, of people that, um, that are doing something positive for our world. Yeah. And there are so many, there are so many, but it, it's, un, it's so unfortunate that an event like this happens and it overshadows all of the good that is being done out in the world. Um, because we don't hear about that and we don't celebrate it the way we should. And then something like this happens and it garners the, the attention of the world because of the, the callousness and cruelty that, uh, that these people are capable of. And the tragedy of losing these two officers and, and that innocent civilian, um, you know, who, who will go about their lives and, 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 and touch people in positive ways and have their families celebrate their lives. And uh, and to have those lives snuffed out in an instant because of the the madness of 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 two punks, it's just it's just sickening to me. It really sickening. is. It really is. And 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 then you had that uh, uh, Santa Barbara murder. Uh, the students, the, oh, yeah. the children, mm -hmm. were just beginning their lives. Exactly, and, and and that shows you that even at an at an early age. Um, the madness 
that uh, that can take place. And 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 everyone, you know, the, the the shame is that everyone knew that this guy was a was a Looney Tune, and he was a ticking time bomb walking around. Yeah, that's another and one. And, and and there's and there's I hate to say this, but there's hundreds of thousands of them walking around right now amongst us. And you know, uh, people and you know, just like that. And you know what else, Randy? We had a story here a, a year or two ago here in Florida, and it was a story about and 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 you've probably got many of these too. There was uh, somebody down in the Tampa area who was planning on going into a busy part of Tampa and just shooting up people, yeah. and and they got this guy and they arrested him and they knew his plan, and it really only made local news. And I, and I said to Robin, you know what just happened? What just happened is we don't have a story tomorrow that is another one of those right. horrible right. stories. So the police, well, you know, we, we've had this debate before about the, the job of law enforcement. And somebody will call in inevitably and say, police don't protect you. They only show up after the crime. And I, every single time I will bring up a story like this that says, no, they often are there before it ever happens. You just don't hear those stories. Mm-hmm. Those stories don't make yeah. it into the news because right. it's not big news. Exactly, it hasn't risen to the level of, of the uh, of the of the madness of, of death. Yeah, yeah. But when a, when a detective is undercover and and trying to foil something and is successful at foiling it, it may even it may not even make the news. Well, that's true. You're right. And and as a trainer for law enforcement officers. How can you prepare them for something like this? Because it's totally uh, blindsiding them. Well, and, and you know, the the unfortunate this will have ramifications for years to come. With what took place, and, and the the way the reason I say that is, uh, police officers train regularly um, for officer survival. They train firearms. They train with tactics to save their own lives because if you're going to serve, you need not only survive your career physically, but also emotionally and also ethically. Those are the three ways that, that you, if you're going to get to the end of your career um, with your health intact, you have to survive that 25 or 30 years in all those manners. And physically um, police officers train, regularly for police combat but the 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 difference between a a police officer and a soldier is that when you're in a in a combat theater you are constantly on the lookout for a threat and that threat you're you're prepared for it every moment that you are in the theater of operation it with policing you have to go from being officer friendly mm-hmm. to being willing to get into combat warrior mode instantly, and uh, it's a very difficult transition in in the civilian world because you're having so many interactions. You know, every day a police officer has hundreds of interactions with citizens, literally from you know ordering your food during lunch to uh, to issuing a citation to making an arrest and to be physically and emotionally prepared to uh, take a, uh, you know, to go into combat takes a, a transitional time. So you can't be constantly with your weapon ready in a civilian world, unlike a soldier. You know, you, when you said go for lunch, you reminded me of a story, and I'm, I'm sure you remember this one. And I, boy, G- Google is so amazing. I just Googled the story. Um, th- there was a police officer at a McDonald's. Um, oh, I, I guess I didn't find the story. I found a video, but never mind. <clears throat> Do you remember the story? There was at a McDonald's and, and, in San Diego. Was it in San Diego? And he's next to the a, officer in San Diego, where he. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He, yes. He bought the child uh, his a meal. Right, and he gave him some encouraging words about his right. future. Right. Yeah. Another, tra- another, another tragedy, that was, that was a combat Marine veteran who uh, had come back to the police department after serving uh, in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, um, 
was in the restaurant, was in McDonald's, the little boy didn't have enough money to pay for his meal, and the officer paid for the meal, talked to him a little bit, and walked out to his patrol car and was murdered yeah. by uh, uh, by a, a suspect who just simply wanted to gun down a police officer. Just because of the uniform. Saw the uniform. Because of the uniform, right. That's unbelievable. Do, do you think the woman that had the concealed weapon when she pulled it out and, and, and tried to uh, uh, help the situation by trying to kill the bad guys, do you think that because of that action that she was able to keep others from being killed because you know, they were being I, uh, taken aback? I don't, I don't know enough about it. I, I, I've only, I got that third hand. I, I don't know that that is factual yet. Uh, I'll probably find that out today. Hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, the, 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 my belief, and, and I've seen this, I've seen this take place, is that um, armed citizens who are, who are willing to become involved have saved their own lives and the lives of others, um, you know, countless times across the country. And, um, you know, I don't know if that's the, if, 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 if this woman engaged them, um, I'm, I'm hearing that from a couple different sources, but I don't know that for a wow, fact. Wow. Well, we are almost out of time, uh, Randy, but, uh, it, what a timing. I mean, how would we have known when we booked you that this was going to happen yesterday? Uh, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Randy Sutton is who you're listening to. He's a wonderful author. We need to mention the books. Uh, and, and let me just say something about have those. Him come to my Have him come to my website. It's uh, www.thelegacychallenge.com. It's thelegacychallenge.com. Uh, a Cop's Life is one one book. My father, by the way, hated the word cop. Uh, True True Blue <laughs> is, an, is another uh, one of his books. And and if you didn't already hear us say it, Lieutenant Sutton was with the Las Vegas Police Department, still works with them, and was uh, obviously very shaken. Has been. The whole country has been shaken by this story. Yes, yes. Yesterday. It's a, it's a, it's a tragedy for everyone, not just us. Will you be doing... The world a, lost two good men. Will, will you take off your trainer's cap now and become a, a counselor for a while? Um, you know, uh, yes, I will. Uh, that's, you know, that's part of, that's part of what the, um, the role has to be. You know, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of people that are very troubled by what took place. And the only way to, uh, to combat it is to talk about it and try to make some sense of, of, uh, of the lives of these officers to celebrate their lives and what they, what they have accomplished with them. You know, the, uh, uh, both of these, both these officers had long careers. Uh, they leave behind, um, you know, grieving family and children and wives, and and it's just a it's a very very tragic, very tragic situation. And 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 a crazy thing in our in, in pop culture, I guess, is that bad guys are depicted as good guys. In in, in the video game I mentioned earlier, the police are the bad guys. You you, you yeah. have to shoot down the police in order to earn points. Um, and even in films where where the the police. Are are really the the good guys? They all they always have to have a, a police guy who's like a, a former convict, because a real because a police guy who's lived a, a, a straight and narrow, clean life. There's no way he can actually fight bad guys. They got to find another bad guy to be right. Right. They get him out of a jail or something like that. Right. And, and it, it, it's it's you know the the whole Hollywood um, mentality. Yeah. You know, the way they the way that uh, the police are are portrayed. Um, you know, and of course, you know, I've been in several movies where I've, I've been a right. police officer, uh, but it, it's very disturbing to me. And it's, it's, it's unfortunate because um, there are so many, there's so many men and women out there literally every day um, doing their jobs yeah. in, so, in, in an honorable way touching the lives of people in very positive ways and, and, and literally putting their lives on the line. Absolutely. And, um, Randy, we're, and this was a, we're up against the clock. Thank you so much okay. for being with us. Lieutenant Randy Sutton, go to the legacychallenge.com. Attic Mall Studios. This is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. Five people dead, including the two suspects in Las Vegas. Police say a man and a woman ambushed two police officers at a pizza shop, then went to a Walmart and shot and killed another person. I was saying just hear people 